Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my guide on how to beat floors 11 and 12 of Spiral Abyss 4.2. We get enemies from Fontaine, classic Sumeru bosses, and a combination of various enemy types. And as always, I'll give you some tips and strats against these different waves of enemies. If you're a longtime player and Abyss clearer, then these chambers might be fairly easy to you. But for others who are still in the growing process, hopefully my guide will make your attempts easier and smoother. Let me just flash some very general reminders before you tackle Spiral Abyss, which you can pause to take a quick read. This abyss blessing is based on HP changing mechanics, which lets you deal a shockwave blast at intervals if your HP changes enough times. Very Fontaine and Farina themed as expected. Starting with floor 11, a grouper on this half will help you with the defend the monolith chamber, but it's doable even without a grouper. You just really want that hydro unit on the team to counter pyro shields. Electro is also a very good counter against pyro shields, followed by cryo, animo, or geo. So for this half, I opted for a taser team with Barbara as my hydro applicator and sucrose as a grouper. Other good team templates would be mono hydro, freeze, bloom, hyper bloom, national, basically teams that are hydro based. On the second half, a quickened team can help you with the primal constructs, but if you have enough DPS anyway, it's not necessary. There aren't any other particular elemental counters required here, so you have more flexibility in choosing your teams. On this half, I used the Hyperbloom team. Starting off with our monolith chamber, I first turn my attention to the crab behind to disable its shield and kill it. Once it's disabled, it practically doesn't do anything anymore. While you're fighting the crab, the first two whopper flowers should teleport to you, so it's possible to already deal a lot of damage or kill them while you're there. Every time you kill a whopper flower, another crab will spawn, which I head towards ASAP to disable as well, and if you can, attack the pyro slimes on the way so they will die or target you instead. I don't mind the pyro slimes attacking the monolith since it's the crabs that are more dangerous. As soon as a crab is disabled, I just leave it alone and focus on disabling the other crab before it does too much damage to the monolith. Continue doing this until all the enemies are gone. It's okay if you lose a big chunk of the monolith HP in this half because in the second half, it's easy to make the monolith take absolutely no damage. If you can, recharge your energy while finishing off the last enemies. Here, the ruin monsters will just teleport to you, so just let them follow you away from the monolith and kill them as they're grouped together. I went for one of the snakes first, since the ruin jellyfish just floated to where I was. Last is a big ruin grater who will, again, just follow you, so just fight and lead it away from the monolith. Rain, witness the power of good luck. This spawns two Pyrolectors and a Dendro Samatril. If you have a crowd controller, it's easier to group them up, but if not, what I do is kill the Samatril first so it doesn't spawn those annoying vines. Then I run to the edge of the map so that they're all lined up right in front of you, which will make the farthest Pyrolector drift closer. Once they're beside each other, run to them and just deal your AoE damage. Let's dance. When they gain their pyro armor, it's just a matter of destroying their bars with counter elements. Hydro is the fastest counter with Electro coming in second, which made my taser team very effective. If they summon those pyro structures, destroy them ASAP to deal a lot of damage against their armor and stagger them. In this chamber, we start with primal constructs spawned in a line. If you don't have a crowd controller, approach them from the side so that you can push them into each other and group them even tighter. Then use your AoE attacks to get rid of them. If they go invisible before you kill them, you can simply use quicken reactions to disable and make them visible again. Then the second wave is just a single Geo Aramite. You can just focus fire on him, or when he brings out his crocodile, you can kill that first to stun and weaken the Aramite and make him easier to kill. Rain outlines your fate. Let me weave you a verse. Propagate! Stand with me! This chamber only has two Fatui operatives. I approach the right one first and stay close to them since the other one will just do a teleport attack and group up together, which will let you more easily damage them simultaneously. Also, you'll notice they change their names when you keep resetting the chamber. There doesn't seem to be any consequences if you manage to kill one earlier than the other, so you don't have to worry about them regenerating HP or anything. It's more or less a straightforward battle once you're able to group them. 
clear. Enhanced animal module 75. Ready, steady, go! <laughs> to ashes! Absorption test! On, repeat! Let's dance! As you wish! Last on floor 11 are two Bethysmal bishops. These enemies aren't new, so you might be familiar with how to deal with them already. For easier grouping, you can edge bait them so that they stay in place a bit more. They get staggered quite easily, so be mindful when using circle impact abilities since they might get pushed out of your AoE. But they will also generally chase you, so hitting them both at once isn't going to be too difficult, especially if you've already edge baited them. Rain outlines your fate. Propagate! Spring forth! Our bond is strong! Now we can move on to floor 12. For the first half, you very much want counters against pyro shields once again, and this is clearly meant to allow hydro characters to shine, with Electro being the second best pyro shield counter. This half also spawns suckable enemy mobs, so if you have a unit that can do strong grouping like Kazaha, he'll be very helpful here. A good healer will also be a big plus since there are rift hounds here, burning auras, and other potential sources of big or persistent damage. Just like in Floor 11, hydro based teams like Taser, Mono Hydro, Freeze, Bloom, Hyper Bloom National, and the like are good picks. The second half is going to be purely boss fight, so bring a team that's good in single target. A quicken team will especially help you against the Asimon and Dendro Chicken. And then have strong enough shielding and healing because the last chamber will deal a lot of damage and have a lot of staggering attacks from Coppelia and Coppelius. I'll be using the same Taser and Hyperbloom teams as before. Coming into chamber 1, the first wave spawns a Pyromage and Dendro Samatrol just beside each other. Next is a Pyro Abyss Mage and two large Rift Hounds, and you want to deal with the Abyss Mage first since he's the easiest and the Rift Hounds just tend to follow you anyway. Then it's a matter of just killing the Hounds simultaneously, though their patterns can be very erratic because they charge at you, sometimes they unnaturally stay still, and them disappearing is quite annoying. But generally speaking, they will keep following you and you can deal AoE damage to them pretty easily. <laughs> Last is a Pyro Lector and two Breacher Primas that will attack you with Dendro, which can inflict burning on you with a Pyro Lector, so watch out for that sneaky damage. If you have a grouper, just suck them in together for easier AoE damage. I also like pushing them towards one another just for added crowd control. When the Pyro Lector gains his Pyro Armor, it's now a contest of how fast you can apply counter elements against him. Hydro is of course the strongest counter element, and the Electro is the second best one, which makes the Taser team pretty effective against his armor. If the Breachers are still alive, they'll naturally just take collateral damage and die while you're fighting the Lictor anyway. Next is just Asimon, who's pretty straightforward. He'll stay visible for a short while, where you can do a bit of damage first. The first time he goes invisible, he'll just teleport to where you spawned. The fastest way to disable him is to inflict a Quicken Aura. That stuns him for a good while, which is when you can do the most amount of damage with your rotation. If you don't have a Quicken team, then you'll have to either destroy his parts with Electro to make him appear, or just keep attacking him even if he's invisible, and you can easily track his location by seeing debuff auras on him or by the damage numbers appearing. Anyway, if he goes invisible again, just repeat the same process. He typically teleports where he's facing, which will help you quickly track him. Rain outlines your fate. On to the second chamber. The first wave summons four mechs, and I like starting this by going back to the corner where I can edge bait them. When they charge towards you, they'll naturally group together, which makes them easy to deal AoE damage too. The rolling mechs can be annoying though, since when they charge, that might accidentally put them farther away from one another. Staying close to the edge is a good way to control their position though.
After that, two mechs will spawn in the center. For that, just head straight towards them and they'll naturally group together which lets you easily kill them. One of them also summons a turret which you probably want to destroy early on so it doesn't get a chance to deal much damage. Let's dance! Odds for beat! Animal test 63 of... Absorption test! Wings of darkness! Ugh. Eyes on me! Last, a construction mech and two smaller mechs will spawn. The construction mech will first do charge attacks, so sticking closer to the edge of the map helps with keeping them all close together. By royal de huh? If you target the smaller ones, the construction mech will also keep on following you, so grouping here isn't much of a problem. It's really the spinning attack that can be annoying though, so when it does that, be prepared to dodge, shield, or iframe it so you won't waste too much time running away. With a lot of time left, you can gather energy to make the next chamber smoother. Oh, Next is the Jade Bloom Terror Shroom. It has pretty high dendro resistance, so you'll notice that spread hyper bloom and burgeon attacks deal much less damage than usual. However, you can still brute force it even with such teams like how I'm doing, as long as you have enough DPS. Quicken reactions will make it fill its rage meter, which will make it do a random raging animation. The best case scenarios are when it just stays in place, since the charging animation makes it annoying to chase it. At that point, it gets stunned and it has lower resistance, so time to just deal as much damage as you can. If you're using a team with Pyro, be careful when it gets burnt since that will make it summon fungi to help it in battle. Out of my way! Spring forth! Rain outlines your face! Onto the last chamber. The first wave spawns two Kairagis and two Pyro Fatui. If you have an animal grouper or freezer, you can just suck in or freeze the Fatui before they have time to react. But otherwise, what I like doing is first going to one side so that the Fatui will jump backwards towards the other one. Then I'll face them so their backs are at the edge. Even if the other one jumps, they're still cornered. The Kairagis will also just charge towards you, so now they're all grouped together, which makes dealing AoE damage so much easier. Absorption test. As usual, be very careful about the Kairagi's health, since if one dies earlier than the other, they will try to regenerate half of their health, which will stall the fight. Then, two Pyro Lectors spawn far away from each other, which is quite annoying for trying to beat them simultaneously. What I do is go to either the 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock corners of the map and stay all the way at the edge. This will cause the farther Lector to come closer to me, which will then put it right next to the other Lector. Because of that, it's now easier to kill them together rather than having to beat them one at a time. However, if you have a grouper like Kazaha, then he can make this fight go faster just by sucking them in. Now it's the Icewind Sweet boss again, but this time it'll be the Dirge of Coppelia version. Most of the pattern is still the same from the Coppelius one where they split apart and do their dances. They don't have an elemental shield, but they get increased resistance during their dance sequence. Be careful of Coppelius as he will fire off Cryo Slashes. This can be especially dangerous if you're using Bennett as they will trigger melt on your unit from his self-infusion. Coppelia's animo attacks have a small range, so if you have ranged units that can stay safe, that'd be nice. But they can't 
stagger you as well, which might leave you open to Coppelius's cryo attacks. The most comfortable way to fight this half is with a shielder, but in my case, having Singcho also helped a lot for his interruption resistance buff, and having very strong healing and taking advantage of burst iframes a lot here can let you get away without a shielder. They will continuously reunite and separate as the fight goes on, so just stay alive and repeat the process until they're dead. Don't be scared! Propagate! And that's it for this version Spiral Abyss. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the new enemies in this round, if there was a chamber that you found particularly difficult or annoying, and especially what teams you used. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!